Hi, everybody, and welcome to this lesson on placement groups. So when we launch new EC2 instances, the EC2 service kind of attempts to place the instances in such a way that all of the instances are spread out across underlying hardware, and they do that in order to minimize any kind of correlated failures. So we can use placement groups to kind of influence the placement of a group of interdependent instances to meet the needs of our workload. So there are three basic different kinds of placement groups that we can work with within AWS. And placement groups, again, are a logical grouping of our EC2 instances. So the first type of placement group we have is a cluster placement group. So in this is basically a logical grouping of instances within a single availability zone, right? So, and it can span peered VPCs in the same region. So the chief benefit of a cluster placement group, in addition to a 10 gig flow limit, is a non-blocking, non-oversubscribe, fully bi-directional nature of the connectivity. So in layman's term, right, all nodes within the placement group can talk to all other nodes within the same group at a full line rate of 10 gig flow and 100 gig aggregate without any slowing due to oversubscription. And cluster groups are recommended for applications that benefit from, let's say, a low latency network, a high network throughput, or even both. And if the majority of the network traffic is between the instances in the group, right? So in order to provide the lowest latency and the highest packet per second network performance for the group, this is when we would choose the cluster placement group. So then we have the partition placement group. Now they basically help reduce the likelihood of correlated hardware failures for your, any of your applications. So when, you, when you're using partition placement groups, EC2 basically divides each group into logical segments called partitions, hence the name partition cluster group, partition placement groups. And EC2 ensures that each partition within the placement group has its own set of racks and each rack has its own network and power source. So no two partitions within a placement group share the same racks, and that allows you to isolate the impact of any hardware failure within your application. Because again, even with AWS, hardware failures are bound to happen. And with placement groups, and especially the partition placement group, you're trying to minimize the impact that any hardware failure will have within your application or within your network. These kinds of groups, the partition placement groups can be used to deploy, let's say, large distributed and replicated workloads, you know, such as HDFS uh, or H HBase and Cassandra and across distinct racks. Now, when you launch instances into a partition placement group, EC2 tries to distribute the instances across the number of partitions that you specify evenly. So you can also launch instances into a specific partition to have more control over where the instances are placed, or you can let AWS automatically decide that for you based on best practices. And the last type of group we have is a spread placement group. Now this one is a group of instances that are each placed on distinct racks, with each rack having its own network and power source. Now they're recommended for applications that have small number of critical instances that should be kept separate from each other. So launching instances in a spread group reduces the risk of simultaneous failures that occur when instances share the same racks. And they also provide access to distinct racks and therefore are suitable for, let's say, mixing instance types or launching instances over time. So these are the three, three main types of groups that we can choose if we are going to be utilizing a, a logical grouping of our EC2 instances via placement groups. Now there are some limitations and rules that apply to placement groups. So some rules that you guys see on there, right? So there are some limitations in terms of what instances you can launch in which placement groups. So there are, no, you cannot launch every single instance type in, in cluster placement groups, and you cannot launch every single type in a partition placement group. So there are limitations on what type of instances you can launch in what type of groups. And a cluster placement group cannot span multiple availability zones. The maximum throughput speed of traffic between two instances in a cluster placement group is limited by the slower of the two, right? So each instance type has a max network throughput that it supports. So the minimum one is going to be the max that your two EC2 or your EC2 instances in your placement group are going to support. 
Uh, you can also launch multiple instance types into placement groups and network traffic to the internet over AWS Direct Connect connection, if you have one to an on-premise resource, is limited to five gigs. So these are limitations and rules that apply specifically for a cluster placement group. Now for a partition placement group, right, it supports a maximum of seven partitions per availability zone. And the number of instances you can launch in a partition placement group is limited by your account limits. So if you're in a free chair account, you will have your limits. So you can check your limits in terms of how many EC2 instances you're allowed to launch. And that is basically the minimum one. And the maximum is the partition is the seven partitions that are you're allowed to use. Now, once instances are launched into a partition group, the AWS tries to evenly distribute them across all partitions. And it doesn't guarantee an even distribution across all partitions, but it tries its best to evenly distribute them. I, you can, with dedicated instances, you can have a maximum of two partitions and they're not supported for dedicated hosts. And then finally, the spread placement group, it supports a maximum of seven running instances per availability zone, right? So for example, let's say in a region with three availability zones, you can run a total of 21 instances in the group. And then spread placement groups are not supported for dedicated instances or dedicated hosts, the same as partition placement groups. So these are rules and limitations that you need to keep in mind for each of the three now, you do not have to put EC2 instances in placement groups. It's always best practice and recommendation, especially if you have mission critical applications or your entire ne network infrastructure is on AWS. Now, obviously, if you are an on-prem, you can physically distribute your servers and physically locate them separate from each other. Whereas for AWS, you're kind of limited to the physical access that you have to the data center. So this is the best way that you can still do and still emulate the physical access to the data centers by utilizing placement groups.